Okay. Well, I started Messenger Marketing seven and a half years ago, and uh, the outcome is still in the making, really. But um, the business has actually gone through three iterations. So I actually started as a sponsorship agency, and um, that was actually just after September 11 in 2001. So not the best time, a little bit like the current economy. And um, so I gradually morphed into an integrated marketing agency and have since kind of morphed into a publishing company. Um, but that we now have Messenger Publishing and Messenger Marketing running simultaneously. Uh, well, basically, quite by accident, as many entrepreneurial ventures are. So uh, about four and a half years ago, I decided that I wanted to create a product of my own. I'd always been sort of service orientated and, um, and decided to write a book. I'd written for quite a lot of magazines at the time and decided that a book was, you know, the next obvious thing to do. Not sure why, but um, uh, I guess it was something that I could pull together my marketing and PR and sponsorship skills and, and my event management and a whole lot of other things. So I decided to write a book called Happiness Is. And I knew absolutely nothing about the publishing industry at the time. In fact, the extent of my knowledge is a one-day publishing workshop and a one-day self-publishing workshop. And um, what I quickly realised that was that I could go down the self-publishing route um, because the, publish the traditional publishing was slightly limited in terms of their main distribution channels were through bookstores and um, basically I would lose all control and being a bit of a control freak I decided to do it myself. What I didn't realise was the price tag attached to that so it was going to cost me $80,000 so I had to think quite laterally around well how do I actually underwrite that so I came up with this concept of um, incorporating 300 Australians and 65 photographers and um, producing a beautiful coffee table book. And what I actually did, which was quite unique in Australia, was pre-sell it to a number of corporates. And Clinique Perfume, because they had a perfume called Happy Hearts, and I basically pre-sold the concept and said, you know, producing this book, why don't you use it as a premium incentive, gift or reward, and, um, you know, pre-purchase a number of copies which I can customise with your logo or a message from your CEO and all that, that kind of thing. And much to my surprise and delight, they actually said yes. I guess a lot of corporates in the past had been producing or giving away things like inanimate objects like coffee mugs and golf umbrellas. And I guess a book was sort of something tangible and quite unique that they could actually customise and utilise as part of their marketing mix. And um, so within the first 12 months, we actually sold 36,000 copies of Happiness Is, and which mightn't sound like an astounding figure but in Australia a bestseller is actually 5,000 which is fairly dismal so um, and it's interesting because through bookstores we only sold about three and a half thousand and the rest of them were actually doing corporate deals so that kind of accidentally and out of a need created a whole kind of publishing model Look, I think it's just about thinking laterally, and that's very much what we do with all of our clients now, and I think that can be applied to absolutely any business model, and, um, and I think it's actually quite a smart way to do business because it minimises the risk. So what happened as a result of that was um, we actually attracted a lot of media coverage, both from a consumer and a business perspective. Um, consumer because, you know, it was a beautiful book incorporating so many Australians, but a business perspective because nothing had really been done like that in the publishing world in Australia before. And and, um, and on the back of that, we actually, I don't know, one minute I was sort of pre pretty much working from home producing that book and thought I was having some time out. And the next minute, within four months, I had 12 staff. We'd moved offices twice. And we, um, yeah, and sort of three years later, we've now produced 73 books for a combination of individuals and corporates. So it's um, kind of been a bit of a whirlwind and quite an exciting time. But um, yeah, the whole pre-sales model is pretty much what underpins our business now. So there's the whole production side of putting a book together, which is pulling together the content and you know editing it and making sure you've got a beautiful product that's on brand. But then the other side is really working you know, with strategic alliance partners and um, coming up with joint ventures and, and really working to try and find a fit with other corporations or stakeholders and underwrite the cost and, you know, it, it just is a win-win situation for a whole lot of people. So, doing really well, having a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, well, basically, and it's kind of interesting, I've learned a lot of lessons from that. Two years ago, you know, when it all took off, I just thought, you know, we'd go global and, every, you know, we were producing all sorts of different book series and had very big ideas, and I've kind of pulled back a little now. And just being a much more strategic 
but we've just formed an alliance in the US, um, in New York, which is fantastic with another publishing company. So I'm going over there to spend a month this year just um, speaking with them. But essentially we've licensed, we've just put out a Learn to Surf series in Australia. We've got a book, Learn to Surf Bondi, Byron and Manly, and we're doing Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast, and then a Learn to Surf Australia. And so they've just licensed um, the ability to do a Learn to Surf California, and that kind of model can keep being rolled out globally really, which is really exciting. And, um, and then on behalf of a number of our clients, we're starting to really forge partnerships into the US um, in particular and also the UK at the moment. So it's pretty exciting. Well, they actually run very much um, alongside each other. And if, in terms of focus, um, from a marketing perspective, it's very much book related. So essentially we use a book um, from a production perspective as the core product and then we help people to leverage off the back of that whether they be corporates or individuals, people with a profile on the speaking circuit. And the marketing side is something that kind of feeds through and helps them to fund and distribute the books I guess and come up with a whole lot of different ideas and to leverage the business or the book or whatever they're trying to achieve with their objectives and building brand and things. So I guess um, the majority of my time personally is spent in the marketing business um, and then I've got a lot of staff because the publishing business I guess is more streamlined and systems and process orientated now which I hated and fought for a long time. <laughs> Ah, that age-old question. Well, I actually, I'm not a ball-breaking feminist, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't, I don't actually see any differences. I, I sit alongside male entrepreneurs just as happily as I sit alongside female entrepreneurs. I know a lot of people would argue that point. Um, I did sit on the board of the Australian Business Women's Network for a few years, and I think you know. There are many fantastic organisations, Business Chicks and a whole lot of others um, that are very, very successfully run. And actually, there are a lot more organisations, I think, that particularly support women entrepreneurs um, as opposed to males. But I don't myself particularly see any differences. I try to maintain my femininity, but I think we, you know, we can run businesses very much in the same way. Well, <laughs> there's the client side, I guess, of both businesses, which is very, very exciting. We're starting to work with a lot more corporates who are kind of recognising books as a part of their marketing mix and something that's a little bit different that they can do and, you know, use as a branding tool. So that's exciting. We're working with some great clients like Kentucky and Toby's Estate Coffee and um, a whole lot of others. And then on the other side, um, we've got a few series coming out, the Learn to Surf series, which we'll obviously be trying to leverage as much as possible globally. And that's kind of a, a huge strategy in terms of marketing and distribution and probably forms quite a nice case study that's never been done before. To date, um, it's been out for about six months and we've got 213 partnerships um, from you know people that um, surf schools that are using it with, you know, take a surf lesson and get a free copy of a surf book and then we've got it at different hotels as part of the mini bar, you know, buy a bottle of gin or buy a learn to surf book. So we've done a lot of deals and that's quite a comprehensive global strategy now. So that's kind of big and then we're working on a best of series, um, starting with Best of Bondi and rolling that out and a fashion series and basically we just kind of roll with whatever opportunities arise and it's pretty exciting and pretty nice to be able to be flexible and, you know, take up whatever happens. Self-belief, probably. I think, um, you know, you just have to be extremely tenacious and, you know, have an unwavering self-belief, really, and a fantastic team, um, great systems and processes. There are so many things. Great cash flow, that's one of the most important things. You're learning all the time, you know. I think you can never afford to be too complacent or get too arrogant because there are stages in the business which it's just absolutely unbelievable and I, and I can't couldn't even imagine the growth that we've experienced, but then you need to kind of sit back and go, okay, well now I've got a whole lot more things to learn. So it's kind of a humbling experience and I guess just remain grounded and keep going.